Ok. All right. So class, in today lecture, we're going to proceed on the statement. All right. And then symbolic constants. And do some quiz. All right. So remember that the last class, all right, for this part, I want to recap what we have learned on the last class. Okay. Remember, we have learned about the expression. <coughs> Okay, we learn about the declaration, how to declare the uh, the variable which is consists of integer, floating, character and so on. All right. So and then you understand the what is integer, all right, int, what is float and what is character. And after that, Based on this, you learn about the keyword. All right, what is keyword? Keyword is something predefined by the system. However, for the identifier, all right, you yourself define the variable. For example, it is <coughs> it is uh, x. All right, x refer to what? Is it an integer? Is it a float or is it a character? All right. So. This is all rule and regulation on how to do the coding. All right. So I hope after this, please install the codec, <clears throat> the programming software. Okay, code block. All right. I have posted in the e-learning. Please go through and understand how to install it. So for today's section, all right, let's proceed on the statement. Okay. <clears throat> so, what is statement? Statement causes the computer to take action. This is important. Okay, statement will cause the computer to, to take immediate action. Three classes of statement, expression, compound and control statement. So, first, we take a look about the expression statement. Expression statement consists of the following by a semicolon. All right, for example, <clears throat> this is expression A plus B. All right, X equal to Y. X minus Y. So the X less than Y. X is equal to Y or plus plus i this is this the expression that will cause the computer to take action what action to to process the information all right since you declare the integer for example or you declare the float and then you put the statement you need the computer you need the computer to uh, process the information that is take the action Okay, what is this basically? This is basically the increment of i. For example, i equal to i plus 1. Okay, this is the increment. Plus plus i, increment of 1. Minus minus 1, decrement of 1. Alright. So, next we go to the compound statement. Alright, remember we have three kinds of statement. Okay. Expression, compound, and control statement. So for this case, compound statement is made of several statements enclosed within a bracket here. It doesn't, it does not end with a semicolon. All right. All right. For example, you can see this pi. Okay. Pi, this is value, we declare, okay, the statement, uh, circle e equation, 2 pi r, okay, area pi r squared. This is just a compound made of several statements, okay, the combination of statement. 
However, for the control statement, I use for logical tests, loop and branches. Okay, for this part, this is kind of uh, statement that will be used as a function. Okay, used for logical test to test whether it is true or false. Okay, we'll have the loop or nested loop. Okay, and then few of branches. So this is a control statement that control the process. So you can see while, this is while statement, all right? Account, all right, this is, you can see here, we have the compound. Okay, consists of combination of statement. All right, count, that means first you declare the count lah. All right, maybe the, you declare the count as integer. And then inside this looping, while loop, okay, this is looping, yeah. Okay. Count. You need to count the number. Is it the number less than or equal to n? Okay. If the number is true, and then you need to scan the information. That means the user scan. Uh, the user key in the information, and then the computer receive the data. All right. This is receiving the information. Receiving data. Right, so after receive the data and then you have what we call expression. All right, so this is expression summation plus equal to x and then plus plus count that means increment of one. So count here is equal to count plus one. Okay, all right. So now we go to the symbolic constant, all right? So what is what is this basically? Symbolic constant is a name of typical uh, is a name type in capital that represent a numeric constant. Okay, a character constant or a string constant, for example, pi. Okay, you define. Okay, so from here, you define uh, the symbolic constant you type by capital that represent a numeric constant. A character constant or a string constant, for example, like pi here. Okay, let me show you what it means. Okay. For example, a symbolic constant. Okay, hashtag define pi three point one four two. This is symbolic constant. Another one is define uh, true as equal to one and Finally, define friend, F R I E N D as awang. Uh, this is as in terms of a character. Awang kenit. All right. Usually defined at the beginning of a program. All right. Normally, we need to define at the beginning of the program. This is very important. The data stored in the symbolic constant cannot be changed when defined. All right, this is very important, lah. Okay, you cannot declare, you cannot uh, initialize. Once you declare, you define the value. It, it is already there. So, for example, this is very important. Include. All right, this is to access. Remember, this is the function to access the library. Okay. And this is the main where you write your main function. So hold this thing is where you write your whole function. Okay, the first part is to define, to declare. All right, this is declaration. You declare what? 
you declare the, uh, you define, this is the symbolic, yeah, symbolic constant. You define pi equal to 3.142. After that, you declare float, radius, and area. Okay, so from here, after you declare, you can start the process. So you want the computer print the information, all right? Print, function, enter radius, okay? This is output. Output from computer, okay? Output from the program. And then once uh, the program enter, uh, give the output, enter radius. And then you enter the radius, for example, 3.4. After you have entered the radius, the computer, the program, scan the data. Okay, this is input. All right. So after that, you will have the expression. So that means this, all this is the expression. You give the instruction or you, you give uh, the program to take action based on the input you get. Okay, the program receive. For example, area defined, you already defined. Okay. So you need to calculate what is the value pi. Pi is the value this. Radius, you define this radius. Multiply with the radius. So pi r squared. So you need the program give the result, output result. So this is output result. Okay, that's it. It's quite simple. All right. All right. When, execute, when executed, the screen display is something like this. Enter radius. You can see, enter radius. And then you enter lah, number four, for example. After you enter, uh, a split second, you will give the result. Area of circle is this one. Okay, may I know why they give 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Why 6 decimal places? Anyone knows? Why 6 decimal because places? Because of floats. That's Perfect. Floats. Because the free format. Alright. The free format for the float. Where is the float? This one. This one. Can you see? Percentage of float. That means receive the data in terms of float and giving the data in terms of float. Okay, you can see? That means this is, if we didn't define previously, it will consider as a free format. That means six decimal places. You can define three. Later on, you will learn how to define exactly three decimal places or two decimal places. If you haven't defined, automatically will set six decimal places. All right. Uh, let's, let's have, let's have a quiz. Okay. Let me share you the screen. Okay, this is important. Get ready, yeah. Go to Mentimeter. Let's see who will be the winner in two. Okay, perfect. Okay, please go to menti.com and use the code 7276561. Okay, please faster.
All right. Let's start our first question. Answer fast to get more points. Identifiers are name given to. What's the answer? Three, two, one. All right. It is not only variable and array. It is a function as well. Remember that when do when we do the main function, it consider the it consists of variable that we need to declare, and then we have the function in order to process the information and then we have the array to store the information. Okay, remember? Let's say... All right, good. Nazmi. Nazmi. The fastest and the correct one. Congrats. Next, Adila. Okay, Dalhus, Aisha and Ahmad Taki. Okay. Keyword have standard. And uh, this is important. I hope all of you got correct, yeah? Many times I may I repeat this. <laughs> Remember, keyword have standard and predefined. That means the system already know, already know the function, already know the keyword. You cannot change. For example, integer, float. The system already already know. In int is already integer. Float is a double precision, a single precision. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> okay, Dilah number one, the fastest, Daniel Wong. Good, everyone. Let's see. Okay, ready, guys? Basic data type consists of uh, all right, three, two, one. Who got right? Yes, good. Consists of integer, character, float, and double. All right. Okay, Dila still ranking number one and the fastest. Good, good job, everyone. Okay, who can beat Dila? Let's see. Okay, second last. Constant are data stored in. Uh. Okay, good. It is stored in variable and array. Okay. Array is like a vector. Normally, array used to store the character. Alright, now we see. Okay, Dalhus, number two, Dila, still number one. The faster, Muhammad Sabri, good. Okay, this is top ranking, finally. A variable is an identifier used to
Okay. Oh. <laughs> so basically a variable is an identifier used to represent a single data item. Okay, Aisha. <laughs> Okay, congratulations Aisha. Eh, Aisha pula. Dila for for the winner for this quiz, alright? Uh, Aisha, eh Aisha pula. Dila, are you there? Yes, doctor. Okay, please introduce yourself, your section as well as your strategy. Um my name is Farah Dila, but you guys can just call me Dila. Okay. I'm in section three. Okay. And um, my strategy is just to remember what we learned. That's all. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. I, I want to know your your full name and then your your section. Dila. Should I type it in the group or I'll just. Okay. Uh, can you just uh spell your name? Very simple. Uh, I want. I, I just to double check only. Uh, N U R. N U R. F A R A H. F A R A H. B I L L A H. Okay. A uh, V. Sorry. No, Nur Farah Villa. Uh, Nur Farah Dila, yeah. D. Dila, all right. Section? Uh, section 7, um, of course. Uh, because. Sorry, sir? Uh, of course, uh, section 7, only yeah, one section. Yeah, yeah. Because I thought before, uh, sorry, for this semester, I, I teach uh, eight section. So confused. All right. Okay, good job. Please, uh, team, uh, class, please follow the example. <laughs> Maybe you, you can uh, uh, study before the class. Okay, that will be add, that will add will help you as well. Okay. Okay. All right, now we pro we proceed on chapter three. All right. So in this chapter, in this chapter, you're going to understand about the operators and expression. Remember that the previous one you learned about expression. So inside the expression, there is the operator. All right. There is a equal sign, all right. There is a more or less. So for this part, you need to know what is basically the operator, or particularly arithmetic operator. So there are five arithmetic uh, arithmetic uh, operators. Okay, the first one is addition. Okay. The first one is addition. So what is the symbol? Only plus subtraction minus. Okay, multiplication asterisk. Okay, not like this here. Yeah? This is x. Okay, I hope you know here. Yeah? Division is this one. And then uh, modulus uh, operator like this. Okay, like a percentage. So this percentage uh, we call as a modulus operator, integer reminder after integer division and sign depend on the sign of the first operand. Okay, later on we're going to learn more on this. 
Okay, this is just a basic, the arithmetic per, uh, operators. So the operator require two numeric operand. All right, you need to left hand, right hand side. This is like a like a equation. Require two numeric operand. Okay, operation at one side lah, on the left and on the right side. So rule integer and integer. For example, this is like a equation. All right left and the right hand side so integer if the left hand side an integer and the right hand side uh, integer operation give integer okay this is important integer and float or float integer give float okay float is a decimal places float float of course give a float so that mean you can uh, just remember uh, float and integer, float win. Right? So, for example, example 1. I define the integer A equal to 10, integer B equal to 3. The following operation result in integer constant. For example, A plus B, which is 10 plus 3, 13. A minus B, 10 minus 3, 7. A multiply with B, 30. A divide with B, 3. Okay, <clears throat> for this part, it is very important because you define the integer, give integer. All right, A, integer, B, integer. So the answer 3 is integer. You can see here, 10 divided with 3, it is 3.333. So the final result is integer, very important. However, A, modulus operator, you can see here, Okay, it is the same. You divide. A divide with B. However, it will give you reminder of 1. For example, A is uh, 10 divide with 3. Okay. So, 3 multiply with uh, 3 is a 9. So this is one. So this reminder will be used as the calculation here. It will take the reminder, all right? So include, how to do this? Okay, let me show you in terms of coding. First, you need to include the studio. This is access library. And then main, all right? You do the main uh, function. So inside the main, you must have the a bracket here, okay, a curly bracket, okay, this is the open and close curly bracket. The first step, you need to do the declaration, okay, declare. What do you declare? You declare the A as the integer, all right, B as the integer. So first, you need to do the expression. This is whole, whole this is expression. Okay, you ask the computer, the program to take action based on the input, which is A is equal to 10 and B equal to 3. So print function, you want the program print the, the expression. All right, you can see here, this is, a, okay, like a percentage D, D refer to, Okay, like this is a modulus, eh? modulus uh, D, modulus operand D refer to the, the data receive. Okay, the data receive in terms of integer. If this is F, the data receive and give the output in terms of float. Okay. So all this will give the data in terms of decimal. Uh, sorry, in terms of integer, that means the whole number. So, this is the new line, all right? A plus B, it will give you A plus B is 13, okay, and so on. So, this is the following result. It gives you 13, 7, 33, and 1. 
Okay. This is the whole process lah. Basically, this is the output. The output screen. Alright. So, it, it is quite simple basically to do this. So, another example. <coughs> First, you declare V1 as the float. Okay. This is declaration. Float V1 equal to 12.5. You can see this is the, the one decimal places. And then you, secondly, you define V2 as a float equal to 2.0. Okay. So, you want the result will be like this. This is in term of float. All right. Previously, it is in term of integer. So, this is in terms of float. And this is in terms of integer. I don't want you to confuse on this. This is very important. Okay. So, I want to have this kind of process. V1 plus V2 is equal to 14.5. So, how to do? The same thing. We do the, all right, we include the studio, which is our library, and then we start the function with the main, all right, the main, uh, the main function, all right, open and close curly bracket. So inside here, we must declare, declare our identifier, okay. So V1 as the float, V2 as a 2.0 as a float. So from here, I can see that I want to print. This is expression lah again. Expression. I want to print uh, this one, V1 plus V2 in terms of float. You can see. So from here, if you uh, not define any uh, decimal places, it will automatically set as a free format. When it is free format, automatically six decimal places. Okay. So after you have input print the function, all right, this symbol F, new line, that means it is below the line, below this, uh, this, uh, this one, this, this statement. Okay. It will give the result V1 plus V2. All right. And then the next new line, it will give you this result, this result, and this result. So how it looks like, how it looks like with the following output, free format, you can see, return six decimal places. So you can see how many places, six. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is automatically. All right, the next part, example three, okay. For example, I want to declare C1 as the character, car equal to P and C2 equal to T. This, remember that the character, CHR, only single quotation mark, all right? All right? For the string, it is double quotation, quotation mark, all right? This is very important lah to remember. The following character constant from ASACSI for P is 80 and T is 84. Okay. So from, from here, this operation gives integer constant. Okay. C1, P, C2, T. Okay. When you refer to the ACSI table, I show you before, uh, this value P, okay, contain 80 value and T contain 84 value. So when you do the process, okay, C1 is 80 and C2 is 84. This is combination. Not that we cannot add P and T. All right. So from here, we cannot add. We must use the character, okay, because P is a character, but inside the character, it is a numerical value. Arithmetic operators operate on numeric operand, operand only. Okay, this is what I mentioned before lah. 
for character constant, we must use their integer A A ASCI value, right? This is the value. You can refer any ASCI. Okay, you can see P and T got their own value. So how to program? The first, we do the coding. Okay, include studio, do the main process. All right, the first part, we need to declare this P, all right, as a character. Okay, sorry, we need to declare, okay, C1 as a character. And this character refer to P. When refer to P, it will reflect to the ASCII. Okay, this is uh, international sta uh, standard. And then you declare character for C2 as equal to T. So, and then this is all the expression. All right. So you declare, all right. Uh, C1 is what? You can see. C1 is referred to AT. Character constant, P has integer value. That means it will give you integer value because you set D here. And then give a new line, proceed to the next process. If you don't put this N, it will give the horizontal uh, result. Okay, if you put the this line, Okay, if you put all this, it will give the vertical result like this. You can see, it is vertical. Without this, it will give the answer like 80, 84, 164. So this is very important. Okay. All right. Okay, when you look at here, you can see that I want to highlight the most important point here. When you look at here, print decimal, that means they want to, the program want to print the, the, the integer form, all right? They give in terms of this one, all right? Five, when it refer to ASCI, okay? The character constant 5 has integer value 53. Okay. Because, because this is considered as a character, character constant 5. So now we go to the unary operator. All right. Previously, we learned about the arithmetic operate operator. Now we go to the unary operator. Unary, unary operator act upon on single operand, right? So this is like the first step. Okay, this is the uh, the types lah, all right? Unary minus, not equal to subtraction operator. So what it means is like this. What is unary? It is like this. 3 plus negative 3. Okay, where is the unary? This one. Okay, or it is 3 minus negative 3. Okay, it is referred to the belonging to the that character constant. Okay, this is unary. So it refer to this one. Okay. Increment operator. Increase operand by Y. This is what I mentioned before lah. Okay. When you see plus plus, it is increased by one. You see minus minus, it is decreased by one. So the next part is a size of written size of operand in byte. Except size of. Okay. Okay, this is important. Set the size of this one. Character array. Okay. So size of 
return size of operand operand in byte except size of character array lah return the number of array element cast operator convert between the integer and float point constant okay this is the node plus plus is actually like this lah i mentioned before increment by one minus minus j is a j equal to j minus one that means decrease by one so let's take a look about the example okay so first we need to include the library studio lah our library studio access the library because the library got all this information all this information okay so first we declare integer i equal to 2 and integer j equal to 3 after that we declare float x we declare x as a float which is the value you can see this is uh, initialization you initialize what is x so you want the system know x already have the value which is 4.5 and then you uh, declare b as a character all right the value of a uh, the the constant is a okay and c7 is refer to the array okay array of string uh, sorry array of character all right c7 that mean it it receives seven element so what's the seven element one two three four five six and null and ull it is empty it it, it is like that all right so seven in total and then you declare integer d okay this is array all right i want to show you this is array it is a vector all right you declare d contain three element okay two seven and nine okay this is element one two and three so what to do here i want the i want to include the expression the whole this is the expression so first i want to output the result in terms of decimal all right sorry in terms of integer so i include here okay and then in a new line i i eh, sorry plus plus i so increment by one so two here two here sorry um two not two so i here equal to i plus one so what is the value of i plus i plus one which is which is 3 okay and then i want the same j okay this is a j plus plus okay okay j plus plus and this is j print d d size of i size of x okay later on i will show you later on uh d d okay all right this one refer to this one and this one refer to this one okay so this one refer to this one and and subsequently all right and after that i want the output give the float okay in terms of this you can see and then in terms of integer in this one so it will give you with the following result okay i will show you the first result is i uh, plus plus i you can see i this one lah. okay this is one this is two three four five six this is one two three four five okay six okay you can see the result of number one is plus plus i so this is three lah as i mentioned before so for this case number two j plus plus okay what is j plus plus print j next evaluate 
j plus 1. Okay, this is uh, contradict. Okay, it is not the same, yeah? Plus plus i is that mean the system already know increase by increase by 1. However, for j plus plus, you need the systems put first. Okay, the value of j and then the next process will increase by 1. Okay. And then you see here, you can see J. After you know that the J is uh, increased by 1, it will give the result 4. Okay, latest value of J is 4. And number 4, you can see the result here. Print, okay, in size of I, size of X. Okay, let's see. Okay. Okay, the size mean the size stored in the program we call as a uh, byte memory, All right? This is the standard integer float constant require four bytes memory. All right, that is why the float and the integer require four bytes of memory. So that means you do the coding. And then you declare the, the the integer, you declare the the float. So that value, okay, will will require the memory. So this memory is four byte, four byte, okay. That will consume lah the memory, but very very small lah quantity. So here character constant, you can see number five, size size of b. Size of C and size of D. So, character constant require one byte only. This is very important. Integer and float, uh, four bytes. All right. For the character, it is only one byte memory. Size of character array require number of array element. Size of numeric array returns total memory required. Okay, three element multiply with four bytes. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, size of C. Okay. Okay, you can see the size of C. As I show you, it is seven element, the size. Okay, and then size of D. Okay, you can see D. Okay, remember that as I mentioned, seven is element. Seven element multiply with one byte, which is seven. Okay, you can see here. We have seven element, right? The C1. Okay, C7 multiply with one byte. The answer is seven size of. Okay, you can see. However, for the for the D one, you can see the D. Okay, size of D, you can see three element. Okay, and this is integer. So three multiply with four, which is twelve size of. Okay, size. That is why one seven twelve. Okay, and finally the result of five. Integer constant, five converted to the following point, constant five. Floating point constant 6.5 converted into, converted to integer constant six. Okay, let's see. All right, for this part, I want the system to convert. Okay, how to convert? You need to do the F here. Yeah? Okay, this is the conversion process. All right, you need the you need to give you need the program give the result in terms of float for this one. So this is five. This is integer. I want to convert into float. So put the bracket uh, before five float, and then it will give the result six decimal places. 
Okay, for the 6 one, 6.5, I want the integer. It will give 6. Very simple, all right? So, before we proceed to the next relational and logical operand, let's see. Let's have a one quiz, one more quiz, okay? Go to menti.com. Okay, let me show Let me check. Okay, this is a recap. I want to make sure you understand the basic of integer, what is float, and so on. Okay, class, please go to menti.com and use the code 75272522. Okay, let's. Oh, sorry. Oh. All right, let's start. Answer fast to get more point. Integer and float give what? Uh, this is quite simple, as I mentioned before. All right, let's see. Make sure all of you got right, yeah? <laughs> okay, not numerical. It is a float. Okay. Let's see. Okay, good job, Abdul. Next. Take the next argument and print it as a. Okay, which one? <laughs> Okay, two of you still choose N. Okay, D, this is for integer, F for float. Okay. Okay, Abdullah still number one, Sabri, the first, the faster one. Okay, good job. Increases operand by one and decrease by one. <laughs> okay, the answer is plus plus and minus minus. Okay, good job, Abdul. Okay. Free format of F returns of what? <laughs> Please make it right, everyone. This is so easy.
Oh, two people still choose four decimal, seven decimal, not six decimal. Finally, let's see. Oh, okay. Abdul still the fastest. Okay, good job. We have a Lee, Ai, Nazmi, Amza, Dilah. Dilah also are the faster. Okay, finally. What is the number of element X for X Malaysia? Okay, Malaysia. <laughs> Remember, we have to include null, nothing. M M E L A Y S I A. Malaysia. Okay. Okay. Who is the winner? Oh my god, Aisha. Aisha is the winner finally. Okay, Aisha, please introduce yourself and strategy, please. Hi, sir. Okay, hi. Uh, there's no strategy, but uh, focus on the class. Okay, uh, your full name please? Uh, Siti Naisha Binti Muhammad Azmi. Let me... Siti Nur Aisha. Uh. Siti Nur Aisha. Yeah? A-I-S-H or Y? Uh, y. Aisha. Huh? Okay, thank you. Good luck. Uh, okay, class please. Uh, okay, focus in the class uh, like Aisha did before. Okay, good. All right, now let's proceed on the relational and logical operator. So for this part, you need to have previously we learned about the arithmetic, right? The arithmetic operator, we learned about the, okay, plus minus, plus plus, minus minus. Now let's have the logical operator. That means it is true or false. That's it. So we have four re rela re relational operator. Okay. So this one is quite uh, easy. Less than the symbol is this. Less than or equal is like this. Less than or equal. Just follow. Less than or equal. Greater than is this. Greater than or equal. Relational operator require two numeric operand. Okay, this is very important lah. Two side lah. And, and the outcome is logical true is equal to one. When it is false, equal to zero. So, two equal operator. Okay, this is equal to. That means this is equal. Should be equal. It is not simply like this. You have to double it. Not equal to, this is like this, not equal, strictly not equal. Equality operator require two numeric type operands. The outcome is logical. Okay, for example, you declare integer i equal to 1, integer j equal to 2, k equal to 3. And then you want to know, is it true or false? Okay, i less than j, is it true? Okay, you can see i is 1, j is 2. True. So the answer is true. 
it will appear 1. Okay, I plus J is equal to 3, is greater than or equal K, which is 3, which is 3, uh, 3 greater than 3 is totally false, huh? or 3 equal to 3 is true. Okay, false or true is true. So for this case, it is true because it is equal as well. Okay, uh, J plus K, you can see J is 2K is 3, 5 is less than I plus 5. I is, I is 1. So 5 is less than 6, which is true. K is not equal to 3. K is not equal to 3. Okay, is not equal. Which is false lah. Supposedly the same. J is equal to 2. It is equal. Yes. It is true. And this is how you do the coding. The first, do the access the library. Do the main function, declare the variable. I want to declare i equal as an integer. And then you want the program print the expression. So this is take the next argument and print the integer. Okay. This is the new line. All right. i less than j. You put all this, the, the condition. All this, it will output the true false true false so that means it will output true as equal to one the false is equal to zero that's it quite simple for this part okay so two logical operand or logical connection okay this is this is a logical part all right there is a there is a connection when we involve n and or, all right. For example, when it is considered n, okay, it, the symbol is like this, double, yeah. When it is considered or, it is this one. So let's see the logical operand, okay. This one we learn about the relational re relational operand. Now we go to the logical operand. So that means you need to see the logic and n or or. Okay, true, true is true. Okay, this is true, false is, okay, true, this is true and this is false. The answer is false. I believe you know already, yeah? like, a, like a logic gate. Have you learned before logic gate during your physics, during your SPM? Yeah. You, you learn right the logic gate. So this is this this is the same. Uh, false true definitely will take the false. It is like the end is very when you have the false, it is totally false. Okay. For the end, you must true true all the true. If you got false, all the false, all become false. Okay, this is false. However, for the or it is opposite one. True, true. This is okay. True. True, four. Okay. It is considered true. Okay. This is true. If all false, all false. Okay. This is true. Is uh, true. Is got uh, it can uh, what we call it eh? for the this symbol. It can tolerate lah. Uh, very simple. <laughs> this symbol uh, untolerate or straight lah. If you got false, all false. Okay. For example, for this one. Example integer i, you declare. You can see i as integer, you initialize i equal to j. Float f equal to 5.5 and character c equal to w. Okay, so this is the logical operand. I is uh, greater than or equal to 6. And, okay, and 
C is equal to W. Okay, let's see. This is true. This is true. I is 7 more than. So you can see true and true, definitely true. Okay, you can see I greater than 6. Okay, this is basically true. When it is or, C is equal to 119. Okay. Okay, you can see C equal to 199 based on uh, ASCII standard, W will store the numerical value to be 199. So it is true. So it is true. F is less than, okay, F is less than 11. So it is true. And, uh, and is very strict. I is greater than 10, okay, which is false. So the answer is zero false. Okay, so how to do that? You can see declare the integer, declare I, declare F, and declare C. So you need the expression, okay? Print this one, you put all the expression, the operator. Okay, and then this is the result. You can see this is result for true. True and false. That's it. Okay, this is quite simple. Lah. This is true. And this is false. This is a logical operand. Okay, note that the number zero has a logical value zero. The rest of the number has logical value of one. For example, uh, five, uh, five, uh, n, n negative seven is actually one and n one while okay, really. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, assignment operator. Okay, this is assignment. That means you have the process that you need to you need to uh, complete the step. You need to complete the assignment step by step. When this assignment is true, you proceed to the next assignment. Okay, this is what we call assignment operand uh, operator. So this is the syntax. You identify. You call the expression as the identifier, as see as you can see here. Okay, a you define you initialize equal to three x equal to y, sum equal to a plus b. Okay, this is five special assignment operator. Okay, this one lah. This one, one, two, three, four, and five. So, let's see. Upper expression one, when the expression one, okay, expression you know previously, yeah, it is a, it is a statement, okay, like 5 plus 2, A plus 1, okay, this is expression. If that expression plus equal to expression 2, that means expression 1 is equal to expression 1 plus expression 2. This is the special assignment. This is how you need to remember. Lah. And expression minus equal, equal to expression 2. So this is how... Expression 1 equal to expression. Okay. Expression 1 minus expression 2. And then you can see expression multiply equal to expression 2. That means expression 1 equal to expression 1 multiply with expression 2. Expression 1 divide equal to expression 2. So expression 1 equal to expression 1 divide with expression 2. Okay, this is the same lah. Alright, let's see. Example, find the final value of i and k. Okay, integer i equal to 5, k equal to 4. So from here, <coughs> i plus equal to 5. That means here i equal to i plus 5. So i here is 5. 
So, the answer is, uh, the answer is 10. So, this is how lah. I, I equal to I plus 5. K multiply equal to, that means this is K equal to K multiply with 3. Or this is not multiply, ah, like this multiply. Alright, after you have understand the special assignment operator, let's go to the conditional operator. Alright, this is the condition. Okay, this is a simple syntax, expression 1. What is the expression 1? If the expression 1 is true, we go to expression 2 and so on. Okay, it is an alternative to the formal if else statement. Okay, this is a branch. Remember, we have the branch if else statement previously you learned. So if, uh, you can say this is if statement, yeah? Branch, if expression one is true, proceed to as evaluate expression two. And then it can be say that expression one equal to expression two. If expression 1 is false, that means it will evaluate expression 3, not expression 2, yeah? So expression 1 equal to expression 3. Okay, this is a ranking 1. The operator procedure dictates which operator has the highest priority, all right? At the top of the table, highest priority, and the one below have the lowest priority. On the same line, the same priority is equal. Alright, this is like arithmetic uh, 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 priority like kubadatato. I believe you learned, yeah, previously. Kurungan, okay, bracket, divide, multiply, plus, minus. Okay, that is the uh, ranking, the priority that you need to solve first. So basically, it is the same like in the programming. When the program see certain kind of operator, it will think first, which is the priority that I need to solve, okay? So this is the operator precedent, uh, precedence group. This is the unary operator, okay? This is the highest priority, okay? Highest priority. Okay, so negative plus plus, okay, this is negative means it is not subtract, eh? this is a unary, uni, unary minus. Plus plus, minus minus, not equal, size of, okay, this is the size of memory lah, and then the type. And then we proceed to the arithmetic, multiply, divide, and the, uh, and this symbol lah, okay, we call it as the, the modulus operand. Okay, arithmetic, okay, plus, minus, relational, this relation, equality, logical, logical or conditional assignment. Okay, this is assignment that we have learned, yeah? So, example, find C and D, for example, uh, integer A, you declare 5 as the integer. B equal to 3. And C equal to, uh, sorry, C and D as an integer. So that means A and B, you initialize 5 and 3. So C here is equal to A multiply with B plus B. And D on the other hand is A greater than B. Okay, this is condition. You can see. So here, this is condition. And this is what? Plus minus arithmetic. arithmetic. So, which one is the highest priority? Of course, arithmetic will have highest priority. So, to evaluate C, there are three operators. Okay. The program, of course, will run from the top to the bottom. So, it will meet C first. Okay, C is equal to A multiply with B plus B. So, of course, uh, based on the priority, it will solve the multiply first lah. Okay, and then plus. So, A multiply with B. So, 
5 multiply with 3, 15 and then plus 3. So the answer is 18. However, for the D, A is greater than B. Is it true? Yes, 5 greater than 3, true. When it is true, it will execute expression number 2. Okay, this is expression 1. And this is expression 2. And this is expression 3. Remember? When the expression is true, it will evaluate expression 2, not expression 3. Can you see? Expression 1 is true. It will evaluate expression 2. All right. So, 10 plus 20, it is 30. That is, that is the answer. So, you will get C equal to 18 and D equal to 30. Okay, now we go to the library function. Okay, for the library function, these are some of the built-in. Okay, remember that during we do the first coding, we include the studio, right? So, this is a library function. That These are some of the built-in already inside the library or intrinsic function that user can call. That means the library is a collection of all the information all the built-in information. So when you do the main function, you need to call the function. Okay, I want this book, book A. So the library will give you the book, the book A specific. You need to call. If you not call the function, it won't appear at all. Okay, so for example, I need to return the cosine of D where D is in a radian. All right, normally the, the program will consider as a radian, not the degree. So this is the symbol. Cos, this is automatic inside the program. Inside the library. Raise e to the power of d. Okay, so you can put exponent. Exp d. Return the natural logarithm of d. So you can put log d. Log base 10. Uh, so you can put log. 10 D. Return D. Okay, D1 is the power of D2. So you need to put pow. Okay, this is power, shortcut. Bracket D1. And this is the power one. This is the degree. Okay, the second one refer to the smallest part, the degree. And then square root, return the square root of D, which is SQRT, which is D. Therefore, okay, for example, ah, this is example. I want to test the example. Okay, so how to give 10 the power of 2? Of course, lah, we can see here, power, we can use power, P-O-W, 10, Two. Give one, okay. Cost, cost zero is one. Give log equal to two. So this is natural log. So just put log. Log two. When you just put log, it it is considered log, uh, natural log. If you want the base of ten, log ten. Give log ten, okay. Log ten bracket hundred. Okay, give. Uh, E, the power of 1.5. Okay, this is exponent, yeah? So, just put exponent. Okay, 1.5. Give 3. Okay, square root lah. SQRT 9. Of course, you can write a program. So, how to write the program? This is the first information. Okay. Since you are dealing with the mathematical arithmetic, okay, the mathematical expression. Okay, the normal one, we use the studio. This is the normal library. If you want to have the mathematical library, advanced library, focus on maths, you need to access the maths library, mat.h. And then start with the main function. Okay, you include... Uh, this is give, you can see, F, okay, receive the, uh, give the output in terms of floating. 
Okay, float power 10, the power of 2. So it will give 100. However, this is float. So dot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, okay, you can see all these 6 decimal places and give you the result. Okay, I think that's all for today's lecture. We already finished chapter 3. Okay, thank you everyone. Any question before we end our session? Okay.